Hello, good morning, God's people. I want to welcome you to another episode of Rousing the Army of the Lord, uh, weekly teaching again this morning. Uh, God bless you for joining us today. Um, we are, we have uh, just finished. We've just finished uh, the uh, episodes on the patterns and the prophetic um, in the last uh, week. And then we are into another one today. I don't know when it's going to finish, but I believe it's going to be a small one. I don't think there's so much to really um, look at there. It's, a, it's just a consideration of a chapter of the book of Revelation. And uh, it's titled The Rainbow Angel and the Establishment of the Kingdom of God in the Earth. The Rainbow Angel and the Establishment of the Kingdom of God in the Earth. Now, um, like I said, this is found in Revelation chapter 10. And um, in order to understand, we know Revelation chapter 10 is not a thought on its own. It's a sub-thought, uh, but it is not all the thoughts that there can be. Uh, we have to look at the general uh, outline of the thoughts coming from Revelation in chapter 8. Uh, after the seventh seal was opened, uh, you understand? After the seventh seal was opened, we see a panorama in heaven in Revelation chapter 8. In Revelation chapter 7 was where we had the seventh seal, uh, or, um, the, the, the seventh seal open. In Revelation chapter 8, we see um, another panorama. And um, we see angels uh, coming forth out of the temple and um, given seven trumpets to blow. Um, praise God. So, wow, I think I left my Bible out. Just can I give my Bible so we can read Revelation chapter 8? Hallelujah. <clears throat> In Revelation chapter 8, let me uh, say it as my, the one that my memory can take before the Bible comes back. You know, in Revelation in chapter 8, we see uh, an angel uh, at the uh, altar of incense was mixing the, the, um, the incense, the prayers of the saints. It was mixing incense with the prayers of the saints. And uh, from there, uh, another panorama, the panorama appeared uh, and uh, where we see, you know, uh, him putting the incense and um, uh, the coals and the incense and everything, bringing on the earth and dropping it on the earth. I know what came to my mind was, that, okay, he's in heaven. Okay, the vision is like up. And then the angel uh, and by the altar of incense in the holy place was in heaven and then was pouring down the coals of fire. Now, the Bible says that the he mixed the um, incense with the prayer, pray, the prayers of all saints. The prayers of all saints. Now, he mixed it with the prayers of all saints. What is the prayers of all saints? It is the agonizing of the heart of uh, the saints of God from uh, generations past. You know, I usually said back in the days, I usually say, oh, this is not about uh, prayer for car. It is not about prayer for building. It's not about prayer for to get a shirt. But all of that are included in it. <laughs> all of those are included. You see, because if you're asking God for a shirt, it's because you are, you are, you, it's possible you are naked. That's why you're asking God for a shirt. If you're asking God for food, it's possible because you don't have food to eat. All of those situations are not situations that are, that are good for mankind. You know, they are not situations that are good for mankind. And therefore, um, Ma, uh, it's, it's part of the prayers. But you see, the major prayers of all saints is the redemption of mankind. This is what we are all praying for. Whether you are praying for healing, you are praying for um, to get a car, you are praying spiritual prayer, give all the spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowledge of because the eyes of our understanding to be a light that we may know more than ever before you for calling this upon our lives, the riches of the glory of your inheritance in us as saints, and the exceeding greatness of power to us as believers according to the work of the mighty power which you wrote in Christ. When you raised him from the dead, I'm so sorry that I was running that fast there. That's Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, 17 to 21, to chapter 2, even verse 1. You know, we can read it to that point. Whatever prayer you are praying, it is part of the agonizing. Let, can I share with you about the agonizing? In Romans in chapter 8, the Bible talks about the agonizing. It talks about the fact that the whole creation is groaning eh, 
for redemption. The seas are groaning, the animals are groaning, the, you know, the mountains are groaning. Every part of creation is groaning. Hallelujah. You see, not only they, but we also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit. What does that mean? We also, it's not only the creation that are groaning, but we also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit. Why is this a first fruit of the Spirit? There? Because it means first deposit of the Spirit. The first deposit of the Spirit in our spirit. Hallelujah. We are groaning. The creation is groaning, yearning for deliverance. The saints of God are groaning because we have not come to the fullness. What are we groaning to get? We're groaning to get into the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. That's what we're groaning for. We're groaning to get into the fullness of Christ. So we're groaning. So in that said, well, as we pray that the Holy Ghost helps us with groans, you know, which cannot be explained to pray, I mean, in human words, you know, to pray the will of God. You understand? So the prayers of all saints are firstly, I put them in categories that you find at the Revelation chapter 8. The prayers of saints there, now of all saints there. The, the first ones are the prayers of believers that are prayed for the emancipation of uh, of the of uh, of mankind, you understand the, the the spiritualization of our minds. You understand the coming into fullness, the coming into immortality. That's that prayer. God wants us the perfect way. That's the way God wants us. He doesn't want us. Um, how do I say it? He doesn't want us um, uh, in a, in an unredeemed state. He wants us to be totally redeemed, and total redemption is coming at the end of the age. And you know that doesn't mean that this is uh, it doesn't mean that it's coming at a particular time, like October 5, 19, I mean 2051, that's the end of the age. Mm, no, it is the end of the age is not only a date time, it is also a becoming time, a time when we have become what God wants us to be. Hallelujah. The end of the age. Amen. So our prayers will be answered. Now, the process towards the answering of that prayer is what we see in Revelation chapter 8, Revelation chapter 9, and then we come into Revelation chapter 10. So in between, so by the time you get to Revelation chapter um, chapter 10, you are in between the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet. That's where you are in. You are in between the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet. Now, so in Revelation chapter eight, you begin to see the sounding of the trumpets. Okay, let's 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 read um, chapter eight in uh, verse. Um, and and he opened the seventh seal. There were, and when he, when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. So the, uh, Revelation chapter eight is the beginning of the opening of the seventh seal. Now, as the seventh seal was opened, the seventh seal opened into the seventh trump seven trumpets you understand so the, se the first trumpet sounded the second trumpet sounded the third trumpet sounded the seventh trumpet sounded i mean like uh, the fifth, fourth trumpet sounded the fifth trumpet uh, sounded which is called the woes then the um then the, the sixth trumpet sounded which is the second woe and then you now have the in between the sixth trumpet sounding and the sounding of the seven trumpets the seventh trumpet, you will have the rainbow angel coming in. And the rainbow, angel, the rainbow angel is a fantastic representation. Wow, I love... You see, even if you are not eating, when you just look into the scriptures and you see word, you know, you say, thy word have I eaten. You know, that may not sin against you. That's one. Then he said, I found thy word and I did eat it. They are a joy to me and they rejoice in my soul. And please, can I say this? Now, don't, don't see the book of Revelation as a separate thing that one Apostle John just got. No, no, no. It was a, yeah. You see, what God told Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter in plain terms, God told Apostle John in signs. Now, what, what the thing about Apostle John is that the signs that he gave are now deeper, makes the thing more explanatory. For example, if you said, John, I mean, let's say, Peter and Paul said, oh, Pastor Dele Mantis took a picture. If you saw that picture, it was so beautiful, lovely picture. I love it. He wore a black dress. Okay, so that's what Paul and Peter said. So, but you know what John said? John showed you the picture. So you now saw the picture, say, oh, okay, he wore a blue dress. 
a black dress or maybe blue and then he has some silver colored okay you know this thing at the sleeves he now has oh okay one of the buttons that one of the buttons is, <laughs> is removed though okay one of, because you are looking at the picture you know, the picture can give you deeper understanding and revelation can expound the thing in front of you can bring your mind alive you understand to the truth of god's word wow the, the pictures are so very explicit very powerful very you know you know brings more intelligence brings in more 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 power more outflow of understanding more outflow of the spirit now so We see in Revelation in chapter 8 is number one, we see the first trumpet sounding. The scripture says, and there were, I don't want to explain the trumpets now. I, I understand about the trumpets, but for some reasons, I don't want to explain the trumpets. Um, I don't want to explain I feel like you're holding the best for the last. Maybe some, maybe next year we'll be talking about the trumpets. <laughs> you understand? Like holding the best for the last. So I don't want to. So I'm deliberately leaving the trumpets out. Okay? Now, the trump. Now, the first trumpet. When what happened? You see uh, hail and fire mixed with blood coming out, and then uh, they destroying the grass. All green grass were destroyed. A third of the trees were destroyed, and all of that. And then the second trumpet sounded, and then you see um, you see uh, uh, what do you call it now? A big, a great mountain, you know, uh, uh, falling into the sea, and a third of the of the sea of the creatures in the sea were destroyed and a third of the um of the ships were broken and they the the third angel sounded and then you see um what you see now you see a, a mountain burning like a lamp falling into the into the uh, into the upon the source of waters and making making it bitter so that those who drink of it shall i mean they die you understand and then uh, you now come into the fourth seal, and when the fourth seal happened, uh, you know, um, uh, what do you call it now? The, uh, the heavenly bodies lost their lives, you know, for the fourth part. You know, before you were saying a third part, a third part, a third part, but when you get to that, place, you see a fourth part. Then, when you, uh, 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 and then when you see, when you come to the fifth, fifth trumpet, and then the fifth trumpet sounded. And then you see that a great angel was sent down from heaven and opened the, key, the bottomless pit. And some locusts looking like things came up. And then when they came up, you know, they, they, um, they, it, I mean, it, it blocked the, 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 the sky so that people were not able to see and all that. And then um, when you see then the, the, the sixth, okay, yeah, yeah. And then, they were, they were not, it, the heavens were darkened, you know, so there's darkness in the earth also because of that. And it was given to them to hurt men for five months. They were not to kill people, but to hurt them for five months. But there are signs, though. There are signs, but like I said, we'll talk about them later, later, later. You know, so, you know, the, you know and then um, you, um, um, you, you say there was an order given to them that hurt not, um, you know, don't destroy men and all that. And then the sixth trumpet sounded. And then the, eight, the four angels that were, that, were, that were put at watch at the Euphrates were loosed. Not physical Euphrates. Not physical Euphrates, you know. These are signs, you know. So they were loosed. And then they were supposed to make the, um, uh, to divert the Euphrates. So make room for the kings of the east to come in. This was an analogy. Let me just give you a chip there. For an analogy about how Babylon was conquered. You know, Babylon had the Euphrates around it. So all the Medes and the Persians, how did they conquer Babylon? They conquered Babylon by, by, uh, by rechanneling. You know when they want to do dam today? You, they will rechannel the water. So they rechannel the water so that they came through dry ground to destroy Babylon. So he said, there's going to be a, 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 a room brought... I mean, a road made for the kings of the of the east again, not physical. You understand, so that they will come and destroy Babylon. Okay. Then, so before the sixth seal, I mean, I said see, the sixth trumpet. I mean, after the sixth trumpet, there was supposed to be the seventh trumpet. But before then, we have the phenomenon of the rainbow angel. So that's where we are at this morning. And that's where we're starting from. 
Praise God. Heavenly Father, give us the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of you, because the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened that we may understand your will and your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I wanted to know something um, about um, what's going on. Now, the book of Revelation is a, is a syllabus for immortality, the eternal life, and the coming of the kingdom age. You see, people don't understand how very important this is. It is important in such a way that it is everything. You understand? It is everything. Because what we have going as Christianity, we just be leading us on one, we just be going around cycles, around cycles. Then, you know, we come from Evangelica, they will now say, okay, Evangelica, Pentecostal, then we now do Pentecostal, do all the wealth, wealth, wealth. Then when we now begin to get uh, picked in our heart, pricked in our heart that, oh, we're preaching wealth too much. We now go to holiness. Then we now, another generation will now come and say, it's not holiness alone. Let's go back to riches. And then, and then we go, we'll be going around. We'll be going around. Let's go healing. Let's go this. Let's go that. That's what we're going around. Going around. Going around. That's what we'll be going around. That's all we ever get until kingdom comes so this book is the timelines the book of revelation is god's timeline for the end what are we talking about the end the end is a beginning of another life now i'm not talking about death and another life now i'm talking about the end of this social system this social construct made by man adam's seed which which who made it as they were fed by the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and built their nations, built their laws, built their systems, built their societies. That's, that's what this realm is about. We built finance, so you have to work, you have to do this. And I'm not saying when you go to kingdom, you don't work. You work, you understand? But you're working to obey God so rather than working to eat. You understand? Not like Adam did. Adam, Adam's food was ready. You understand? One of the reasons why people work today is because they must eat. You understand? <laughs> so, and God sometimes subjected men uh, under that, under that. You know, Bible says he, he subjected them in hope. So even the scriptures say that does not work, should not eat. Old Testament and New Testament supports it. <laughs> so people are mainly working to eat. You understand what I'm saying? So it's just to take care of lethargy and laziness and all of that. Now, but the way Adam did it, Adam was not lazy. Neither was Adam working for food. He was working to keep the garden and to tend the garden, you understand. But therein was his food. You understand? The food was already prepared. The food was already put there. The food was already there before, before, um, uh, before Adam was even commanded to 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 walk. You get so so the kingdom age is when this whole world come under the rule of the Christ. The Christ. Who is the Christ? The Christ is the anointed one. The Christ is God in human flesh. That's what the Christ is about. The Christ is God in human flesh. He is God coming to live human life the way man would have lived it. Did you get that? Christ is God living human life the way God would have lived it if he were a man. So when Christ, when, so Christ is going to come, you know, and then the people of the, of the saints of God you know, are going to receive the kingdom. You get it? They are going to receive the kingdom and the kingdom will be in our hands. Now, not like, not we as we are. Well, maybe if kingdom comes now, you may be put in charge of uh, four or five households. You know, because our, or you may not even be put in charge of people, you may be put in charge of some sector of society in one small area. You understand? Depending on how great your, your righteousness I'm not talking about righteousness by faith, which makes us children of God. But the right doing, for therein is the right way of doing things revealed from faith to faith. So God's righteousness is revealed. And you have been able to manifest that righteousness, the fruit of that righteousness. How you have been able to manifest that fruit in your life as a person. You understand? So we determine into what allocation you are going to be given in the kingdom age. So there's gonna so this age is is going where it's going is coming to an end. The book of Revelation is one that tells us how this will happen. Uh, unfortunately people have misunderstood that oh ah Antichrist is about uh, Israel and uh, Palestine. A, well certain things may be physical 
relating to the book, but the most, the, the most part of the book, the most important part of the book is actually the spiritual timelines of this book. The spiritual timelines of the book gets us ready. Forget about the physical one. See, that physical physical one, eh? God will do it. it will, things will work out. We don't need to, we can't do anything about those ones. They will work out. See, but this spiritual one, they are the ones that will enforce the working out of the physical ones. Because you see, if God does not prepare a king, a sphere, a dominion will not arise. So he's preparing us. So the, 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 the closer we get to the place of becoming the standard of our preparations, the more the things in the physical world will work in order to compel the earth to yield to the physical timelines. So our problem is not the physical timelines. Forget about physical timeline. It is about the spiritual timelines, which are the things happening within us. And these are what the trumpets are talking about. They are talking about the things happening within us. Hallelujah. That's what the trumpets are talking about. They are not talking about uh, one mountain coming and destroy and killing a third of the things in the sea. Well, if it happens that way at any point, don't, that's not the whole fulfillment of it. The real fulfillment is taking in place inside. God is building that, that new creation. God is building that new world. That new world will be built within us. We must, in, 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 uh, in, in principle, agree to the righteousness of God over the nations. We must agree to the righteousness of God over the earth. We must agree to the right way that God has, is the one that only has the right way of doing things. The Bible says to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. We must understand that there is no other way of doing this thing other than God's way. So when we have got into that place where we can say there is no other way of doing this thing other than God's way, then we are ready to rule. Because that means that we don't have any choice anymore. Our only choice is God. So he can now engineer the physical things to start to work to bring this age to an end. Hallelujah. So, and I'm not saying that this age coming to an end depend, de is de would de be dependent on how, God, how, you, how you as a person, as one single person, obey God. You, you see, because there are many people that are obeying God that you don't know. You don't know. Many, many, many people. So you can't reach it based on your own preparation, on your own readiness. You may not be ready, but others may be ready. So the team may come now, you know, ah, nobody is ready. You know, we, we. You just see some guys that are very ready and that are occupying thrones. And they are given spheres, not only in the earth, but in the heavens. You see? You see? Hmm. And as we're doing that also, you know what is also happening? We are pushing the boundaries of human evolution. Eh? We are pushing the boundaries of human evolution. They are said to be what they call junk DNAs in the body of man. As we, as we access the tree of life, we are pushing boundaries. Of human evolution those things that have said that are said to be useless even in the physical grasses that we kill trees that we destroy we just kind of one of them can kill kill we just take one small leaf out of it now and cancer dies forever you know every pain goes you know so we're pushing you see this these timelines as we as we understand this timeline and we will bring the timelines you will see that things will begin to get well for the body of christ and for the world so we you should not concern yourself about when the Antichrist goes, is he going to be born in Syria? Is he going to be born in Russia? Is it a is he a dwarf? Is he a giant? Forget about those things. Praise God. So let's look at the spiritual timelines, which are the things that are taking place within us. The spiritual timelines have to do with the things that are taking place within us. The workings of God, the operations of divinity inside us, bringing all the enemies of God down from our souls from our mind and making us to enter into spirit so that we can bring forth the treasures of god from spirit to the physical hallelujah amen 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 oh glory to god 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 in the highest glory to god in the eyes okay so who is the rainbow angel so let's go to the description of rainbow angel so uh, we're just starting out on the rainbow angel now Okay, I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. Okay, so this is a mighty angel coming down, they said, from heaven, from the realm of spirit in heaven. And 
is clothed with a cloud. Now, cloud usually represents glory. Um, it represents the glory of God. It represents the best that God can be and that man can be under God. That's glory. It's, also, it's usually represented by the cloud. It is uh, cabled, you know, um, in the in the uh, in the in the old in the Jewish language, it's called kabod. That is, you know, um, kabod is the is the best that is all of God, the fullness of God. Now it is wrapped in a cloud because man is not man has not qualified himself to see to see God at that dimension. You understand? That's why. The glory, the, the glory is always enshrouded in a cloud. You see, in the Old Testament, the glory was enshrouded in a cloud. In Luke, I think I put something down here. Uh, in Luke chapter, in Luke chapter um, nine, I think it's in Luke chapter nine. You know, um, Revelation chapter ten verse one, and then in Luke chapter nine, I'll I'll, I'll search it out. Uh, nine, yes, yeah, Luke chapter nine verse thirty four and 35 you will see that when jesus christ when um, he was transfigured before them that means a, a cloud the voice spoke out of the cloud you know there were guys there there was moses and there was elijah and there was the lord jesus christ and there were peter james and john and there was the voice the holy ghost was on christ you understand then the father was also there this was a super council <laughs> a super council you know that this is super council they met and then God just showed a vision of, what, of that meeting to them apostles. Ah, it was powerful. You've never seen that council. This was the highest part of council. And what did they what 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 did they meet over? It was about the redemption. They met over the redemption because um, Christ. Uh, there was a judgment of Christ that was coming, and uh, they, they were to find out whether he had. Um, done all things according to how God wanted it to be done. You remember Elijah and Moses were there. Who is the representation of the prophets? Elijah. Who is the representation of, of, the, of the law? Moses. So the two were there. All of the things that were written, the prophets were there as witness. All of the things that were written in the, um, in the law was there. Praise God. All of the things that were written in the prophet and the law were there. Now, to, to like examine. And they dis- Bible said they discussed about his death. You see it there. They discussed about his death. About the death of Christ. You see that. Uh, Luke in chapter 9, um, verse 34. You can read on until that part uh, closes. Now, and there was a declaration made from the voice that came out of the cloud. It was the father. The father was in the cloud. Praise God. The father was the one that was in the cloud. But you can't see the father. In fact, just because nobody has seen the father before. Uh, they said, but Elijah and Moses went, I mean, like Elijah went to heaven. You didn't die, no. Uh, you should have known that heaven is a big place. You can be there and never have met the father. You know, like I'm in Abuja today. You can be watching it this year and never have met Biden. But you are there. And they recognize that we have a visitor here. He's there. He's only a visitor that the king must see. So that is the... Is the fourth in line, the fifth in line that sees. You understand? Okay. So, so there was a voice coming out of the cloud. Every time, I'm going to teach a message very soon called Coming with Clouds. Every time Moses was talked to God, the Lord appeared to him in the, in the cloud or in a cloud. So, that cloud signified, the Bible says, this, this rainbow angel was wrapped with the, with the cloud. Huh? Okay, if you read, let me read again. And I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed. He was wrapped, clothed with a cloud. Now, you will see um, a likeness of this rainbow angel with the woman with the crown of 12 stars. Uh, in Revelation chapter 12, there are some similarities which you will notice there as we go on. Praise God. Now, so, it came in in a cloud. So the cloud is the best God can be. Is the, 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 it's cabled, the glory of God. That is the, the, um, uh, the best representation of God. The word cabod actually means weight. Weight. You know, like, ah, you can carry that weight. 
Yeah. The weight of God, the weight of his goodness, the weight of his glory. That's what kabod means. So, this is that angel. Let's look at the train of the angel again. I say, and a rainbow, um, is clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. You see, you see the rainbow, a rainbow was on his head. This is the speaking of the menorah. A rainbow being, now there are two areas to that. Number one, which this, the, 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 the second part is very interesting to me, and we're going to describe the second part later. No, rainbow has how many light? Seven. When light goes through a prism, it breaks into seven, and it's like the light of the rainbow. You know, that's seven lights. That is the perfection of light. Every white light is actually uh, those seven those seven colors. You see them as white. You see it as white, but it's also, also always a combination of those seven colors. Now, the only the only light you see in the temple in the heaven is the light of the menorah. Hallelujah. The light of the menorah. Praise God. So this is the menorah speaking. This is talking about so upon. Um, and a rainbow was on his head. So there's a rainbow on his head. So that rainbow that was on his head signified the fact that he had gone through the ministration of the menorah. The menorah is the explainer, the revealer, the um, discloser of the glory of God. You understand? That the believer needs to have. It is the displayer, it is the um, revealer of the glory of God that the believer um, ought to have. The revelation of God that we need to have. You know, Paul calls it that he may know the length, the breadth, the height, and the depth. And to know the love of Christ that passes all knowledge that might be filled with all the fullness of God. So, the, light, the, the house of God has measurements. There, is a, there are measurements to the house of God. When I talk about the house of God, the house of God means the place where God lives, the habitation of God. We are the habitation of God. We have measurements. You understand? We have measurements. There is a way, there is a standard which God is looking at. That standard is met in the menorah. And that's why you see the menorah appearing in Revelation chapter 1, the menorah appearing in Revelation chapter 6. How, where did the menorah appear in Revelation chapter 6? In fact, in Revelation chapter 5, the menorah appears when you see the lamb that was slain having seven horns that have seven eyes. Those seven horns are the menorah. It means that upon the head of the lamb is the perfect understanding of who God is. You understand? And that, you know, and he has, that's his horns. And it is the, when it came on the lamb, it means that that light, which, is also, which also represents the church, because the church must also come forth in those seven perfect representations of all the knowledge of God that could be had. Hallelujah. Seven is normal perfection. So all the knowledge of God that could be had, the love of God, faith, power, everything. The 12 gates, you know, sometimes it's represented as 12 divine government, sometimes it's represented as seven, the, all the light of God that you can ever have. Now, when it came on the lamp, it means that the strength of the lamp is the body of Christ because we, because he said that those seven menorah, you see, they are the body and the stars upon them are the seven uh, angels of the churches and all that. And all that. But, see, it applies limitedly in this place. Praise God. Now, so you see that that what we're trying to explain is that that rainbow angel that had that has the the, the, the the rainbow on his head, the rainbow on his head is a menorah. It is seven lights. The rainbow has seven lights. Light, as you see it, is broken into seven places to make the rainbow. What actually forms the phenomena of the rainbow or the phenomena of the rainbow uh, anytime it appears is that the 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 water bubbles in the in the sky, they act as glass. They are like glass, and then light shafts passing through it act as the the the, 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 the they are like prism, you know. So it 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 when light passes through it, through many of them like that, then you see those lights, you know, dividing into seven places. That's what brings the rainbow. Hallelujah! It's like prism that you have in your laboratory, and you pass the light through it, and it it comes into seven different places. You understand? So that's, that is the menorah. And what is the ministry of the menorah? The ministry of the menorah is to give us the exactitude of the knowledge of God. God as it can, as it can be perfectly seen. Did you get that? The Bible says there's going to come a time that we will know as we are known. That kind of understanding. Uh -huh. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, I mean, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 16 and Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10. It says, 
and it shall come to pass in the last days, in, that, in those days, that nobody shall need to go to his neighbor saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least to the greatest. So that kind of knowing, that kind of knowing where, which is perfect knowledge, this is what that rainbow angel has. So that rainbow signifies that. Now, the second thing that that rainbow signifies, which is also very important for us to know, is the covenant which God has with the earth. But I'm going to explain that later at the, to the close of it. Praise God. So you see, this rainbow, I mean, this rainbow angel is clothed with the cloud. Why is it clothed with the cloud? Because it brings the glory of God. Hallelujah. He brings the glory of God. He is the glory of God himself. He, 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 he conveys the glory of God. So it's wrapped in a cloud because the cloud is a physical representation of that glory. That's why I call it glory cloud. You understand? In the, for those guys in the Old Testament, he showed them that way. You know, it was a parable to them. So that's why John was presented as a parable like that, like it was presented to them, to us, so that those who have a keen heart to search would find it out. You see, God, God clothed all these things and hid it so that people will not be able to use it to make business. And we that know it, God is not giving us opportunity to use it to make business. Praise God. We don't have opportunity to use it to make business because um, some people can use healing power to make business. Resurrect, they have resurrection power to, I mean, that's the resurrection. Um, Raising the dead power, you can use it to make business. You can use a uh, prophecy to do business. You can use the book of Revelation to do business. But it's not even attractive. And to those who desire knowledge, who love knowledge, who are passionate towards knowledge, you know, there are very few. So you know, we can't make money out of it. So you have to be a, a searcher, a seeker. You know, it's, it's for the seeker. I wrote a book, Holy Romy, The Journey of the Bride, which we, uh, we did another edition presently, and I said, my wife said, who do you want to dedicate the book to? I said, to all seekers. Those who are seeking God who wants to know. But let me tell you this. Do you know that eventually this book of Revelation is going to become the standard of operation by the body of Christ? It's going to become our standard of operation, our way of living. That's the way it's going to be to the people of God. Hallelujah. Just as we know how to get prosperity, we know where we are at on the way to life. Say, ah, oh boy, you don't hit life. Oh. Just like we know that, ah, Baba don't go, ah, Baba don't go, man. That man has gone, oh. You know, we say that about those who have hit the jackpot relating to money in the church today. Ah, yeah. Kai, Baba, is, ah, Baba money no, no be here. You know, we talk like that. So you will know when somebody has almost reached there. Because you look at the timelines of the spirit within man. You see it manifesting in that person. You understand? You know that this guy, <laughs> just, you know where the next step like this is coming to the Mexican priesthood. Straight. Eternal. Eternal priesthood is coming into it. Yeah, that's who we are. You see, there's another way. We have to still come into it. You know, the things of God is about you are there, but you are still coming into it. That's the way God does his things about time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, um, so the rainbow angel, we have been able to find out two things about the rainbow angel. Number one is that he's clothed with the cloud. And what is the cloud? We said it is the covenant of the glory of God. Then number two, um, we have seen that um, he has the rainbow over his head. And what is the significance of that rainbow? Uh, and all that. So, um, okay, let's see whether we can look at something else before we close. Uh, relating to the rainbow angel. And the rainbow was on his head, and his face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. Wow. Okay. This is about telling us all the, the, it's giving us the naked truth about who this rainbow angel is. Okay, so let's, just, he says his eyes were like, his eyes were like fire. And, and uh, his feet like, I mean, were like the sun, his eyes were like the sun, his face was like the sun and his feet like pillars of fire. Let's look at the description of Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 1, verse 12 to 15. Revelation 1. Revelation 1. Look at Revelation 1, verse 12 to 15. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and gathered about the chest with a golden 
banned. Now, um, let's see whether they, did they talk about the clothing? Okay, they didn't talk about the clothing. I thought they thought he was wearing white there. But Jesus would have possibly been wearing white there because he was functioning as a priest in the holy place, tending the candlesticks there. Okay, so, okay. And in the midst of this, okay, so, um, clothed with a garment down to the feet, okay, his head and hair were white like wood, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. Okay, flame of fire and the sun, almost like, um, praise God. Mm. Okay, and his feet were like brass, like fine brass, as if, as if refined in a furnace. Uh, another translation says, as if it burn it, as if it's actively burning in the, in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Praise God. You will see that this appearance of this, of this revelation that he saw was the revelation of Christ. Hallelujah. Because the description of what he saw of the rainbow angel looked exactly like Christ. Now, but you see, the thing about Christ in the book of Revelation is that Christ is only a forerunner of his people. What represents Christ represents the believer in the fullness. Do you get that? Okay. Um, Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. Am I right? What did he say about the believer? Also, say, Ye are the light of the world. You get that? Okay. I am the salt of the earth. And we also know that we are the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. You know, saviors shall come out of Mount Zion. Why not one savior? He's a savior, and we are now also saviors. Okay. He healed the sick. So he's a healer. And he said to us, Go, heal the sick. You be the healer. So what Christ is portrayed as being is also what we are portrayed as being. So, what Christ is in the rainbow angel is what the believer is be is going to be or has been in Christ. Hallelujah! Because he's a forerunner, he's a revelation of us. Mm -hmm. I love that word. Christ is a revelation of us in the fullness. And we are the revelation of him in the fullness. Hallelujah. In our fullness, when we come to fullness, we are the revelation of Christ. Now that we have not yet come to the fullness, is the representation of us. Did you get that? So Christ is the representation of us when we have not yet come to the fullness that we can see this is we. This is who we are. And then we are the revelation of Christ when we come into that fullness. Is that clear? So is Christ, but it's also us. Is Christ, but it's also us. Praise God. And we're going to see those two dimensions as we begin to go on. Hallelujah. Okay, so this morning, um, we, we are true. We will continue with the rebel angel as we go on uh, in the next um, episode, which is going to be by tomorrow, by God's grace. Thank you, Father Lord, for giving us grace to understand your word this morning. We ask that you add knowledge to knowledge to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, wait, praise God. Um, so, this is just um, this is the first episode that we're going to continue next tomorrow. By the grace of God, please be here, share the message, let people hear. See, ah, God Almighty, I don't know how else to say. It. See, because ah, the church presently is concerned about so many things. We are like Martha. We are busy, busy building cathedrals, busy building this, building that, and it's so beautiful that we need a place of worship. And so we're so busy about so many things. It just kind of one thing is needful. We're so busy about where to accommodate Jesus Christ when he comes. This is where he put his leg, that's where he put his hand, with his armrest for the chair. We're building all those things. But that's good. But, but what, what, did not Martha love Jesus? Of course, you couldn't deny that Martha loved Jesus. We're busy trying to build buy jets that Jesus will travel with. Oh, fantastic. But there was somebody who was busy trying to become Jesus, looking at his face and hearing him talk. They call his name Mary. The word Mary comes from the word Mara. And the word Mara means bitter. Somebody who has drunk the waters of this world and that he has known that these waters are bitter. They are not to be desired. He's, he's the one 
looking as the maid, as the handmaid looks at the face of his mistress, looking at Jesus and say, Lord, I want the water that come out of you. The water that come out of you. I don't know how best to say it, but in a few years to come, the things we're learning in this series are going to become what the, what the Church of Christ is learning. That would be a prayer. That would be an answer to the prayers of all saints. And that would be an answer to the prayer of Jesus and an answer to my own prayer. So we need to pay attention to these things so that um, the Lord can you know, bring his will to pass in his body. There are so many of us that are still left behind in different places doing religion. We need to come and learn some of these things so that the Lord will be glorified in his body. In Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. God bless you.